There's one, right? Yeah, but it's okay. You can start okay. with the. Uh... Okay, whenever you're ready. <coughs> There you go. Well, first of all, thanks the Code RGV guys and staff for the invitation. Thanks the Text Tuesday. It's a, I think it's a great it's a great uh, initiative that you have here. It's awesome. Um, and thank you, of course, for your time and your uh, mm, patience to be here. I guess <laughs> we are Juan Pineda, which is my friend and colleague, and I'm Joel Pacheco. We are both from McAllen Data Center, which is a data center here in McAllen. Um, first, I would like to know a little more about you guys to know our audience. So please raise your hand. Who is an engineer here? Okay, okay. And who is a student? How many in the room are students? How many are in the room? Okay, great. Awesome. I'm an engineer. So, <laughs> okay, first. Um, I want to talk about McAllen DC, McAllen Data Center, but not before I ask you what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the voice data center, the word data center. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Storage. Storage. What else? Internet. Internet. Great. Sorry? Amazon. Amazon. Awesome. Yes. Well, a data center, as you may know or not, it's a place, it's a physical place or virtual place uh, that companies use to storage uh, IT equipment, okay, mostly. It's uh, considered like a brain of an enterprise or company, is a data center. So yes, uh, McAllen Data Center, it's the largest co-location data center in South Texas. Now. You have another word there that you probably don't know, that is co-location. Everybody, uh, or let's say anybody here knows what it's a co-location data center specifically? Great, that's the, so we're adding value already. So a co-location data center is a specific type of data center that um, works like uh, real estate. Let's say it's a place, it's a physical place that has everything that has a data center, power, cooling, and security. But other companies rent, they rent the space in this data center to uh, store their equipment. Okay? So it's pretty much like a, you contact another company that has this co-location service, and you pay a rent for a space, which is a, uh, a special place with power, storage, and conditions to hold your IT equipment. Basically, the, uh, what, uh, what I was trying to say here is basically uh, the co-location center or the data center, the main functionality of a data center is that you never lose power in your equipment, your mm -hmm. servers, your routers, and all that, uh, basically. And, and he'll go into, into why you can't lose connectivity. That's right. Um, usually, the data centers are called hops as well. Whether it's for an enterprise, which is uh, business-oriented uh, businesses, or carriers, uh, which will then he'll go into here in a little bit. That's right. But uh, the main thing is that they're um, powered at all times. Cool. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, climate controlled, mm -hmm. so the data center always has to be cool. Uh, basically, your servers, your routers get really hot, and uh, it has to be it has to have diversity to mm -hmm. the outside world which we'll get into that in a bit, via fiber and, and mm -hmm. other, other networking uh, issues. Sure okay, one. yes, we can share it if you want. No, but anyway, let's, let's keep going. He's got his spot later. <laughs> so my calendar data center is located in the Chase Tower, okay? Uh, what it's called, a carrier hotel, which means that a, a carrier, uh, the Chase Tower is a place here in, my, in, I don't know if you know, but it's in 10th Street, McAllen. It's called a carrier hotel because it's, it's a place where it converge uh, a bunch of carriers, okay? Fiber carriers are connected to this specific building. It's considered a backbone. It's considered a backbone, yes. It's part of a backbone, actually. And uh, the McAllen Data Center is located there. We have two sites, one on seventh floor and one on first floor, okay? 
It's 100% carrier neutral. That means that we are not tied with a specific carrier. We're not a Verizon data center or a Sprint data center or whatever. We are carrier neutral. So we have uh, many companies coming in okay, with Fiverr. As Juan said, we have a very strong power infrastructure to, um, to keep our customers with their IT equipments protected and connected every time. Okay, our, our infrastructure is, is fully redundant, as we will see in the next uh, slide, which means that we have everything dual from the very beginning of the feed. It's everything dual. So we have dual generators, we have dual uh, plants, Emerson plants, we have everything dual there. And of course, MDC, it's meant for business matchmaking. This means that we work with our customers to uh, help them grow, so to help them get interconnected with each other. You know? So now let's take a look at the Chase Tower from the inside. This is how it looks, OK? So as you can see, I don't know if this is a pointer, I guess. It's not working. But as you can see in the picture on the left, you have the, we have independent fiber. We have a manhole. We have actually two manholes. We are using just one independent fiber through the first floor, seventh floor, and 17th floor. OK, so that's our fiber. And we have as well a power infrastructure that is completely dual, as you can see in the picture. I don't know if you are able to. You see that the from the utility, uh, the utility provider, we have two generators that goes into the um, mechanical room, then McAllen Data Center, then we have the Emerson plant. And from the Emerson plant, it's dual quarter to every rack of every single customer that we have there. Okay. So if you have any questions here, I can have one question if you like about this infrastructure or about data center or whatever. I have one. So you have so one. Great. When for who pays for the infrastructure? Did you guys make the investment, or it was already set up? No, we, we make. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to kiss you now. <laughs> we basically um, the infrastructure that we have, we've invested into it, so it's been uh, an investment from our our side. So what we've done is we've invested all the way from independent AC units to generators. Our generators uh, are natural gas generators. We have two of them to make sure we have that redundancy so we don't have one point of failure. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to go back to some of the stuff that, that Joel touched. The redundancies that we're talking about, uh, they go all the way from fiber redundancy to power redundancy to climate controlled redundancy. So the uh, AC units that belong to the building um, those powers, uh, you know, those feed some of the, uh, the cooling systems that we have. However, we have independent AC units to the building. So if ever the AC unit on the building goes out, we don't get affected. The, uh, the data center does not suffer any, any heating uh, problems. Same thing with power. If we have an outage in the city of McAllen, we're, we're probably, you know, one of the only ones besides hospitals and stuff that don't go down for the simple fact that we have two generators uh, that can run. Uh, one of the reasons why we decided to go with natural gas is uh, where natural gas can run for months at a time rather than a, a diesel generator. Uh, basically, diesel generators, uh, if there was a hurricane to come through, uh, the hospitals get first right to the diesel, and we'd be probably the last ones to have, so it'd be no good right to have a diesel generator. Um, now, the data center that we have, uh, he mentioned carrier neutral. Basically, uh, what that means is that we don't sell any type of uh, transport or internet transport, IP transport, um, or any long haul uh, transport to last mile uh, based on the internet. What we house here at this data center is a lot of carriers. We have some of the largest carriers in-house, uh, largest carrier from uh, Europe. We have the largest carrier from India. We have one of the largest carriers from China. We have several carriers from Mexico, if not all of them, <laughs> I should say. So we're connected via fiber. To, to all these carriers, companies, and we don't compete against them by selling these services. Um, one of the main priorities that we have here in McAllen or in the Valley is that we're a very important hop. He mentioned backbone. We're uh, a backbone for fiber infrastructure in the Valley for South Texas. Uh, from, from South Texas, we go to uh, Laredo, and then we go to El Paso, and then we leave Texas, right? 
So we're one of the most important ones in South Texas. And what happens is that uh, these carriers install their equipment here. And they purchase, for example, the Mexican carriers install equipment here in, in our hop, which is McCown Data Center. And they purchase uh, bandwidth from Verizon, Sprint, or the other carriers from all over the world to be able to take that transport back and sell internet, wholesale internet in Mexico. So that's how they get their internet. So a lot of that transport data, voice, a bunch of that information goes through our, through our center, which is uh, the data center, and then from there it, it jumps over to Mexico. The way that makes its way over there is through the fiber network that, that, that is built here in the valley, which we out of that, uh, we have international crossings via fiber. So we're connected to Mexico via fiber as well. So, I don't know if you want to, oh, there you go. Um, so we deal with a lot of the, uh, again, a lot of the carriers from Mexico, and, that, and that's how they get their, their internet so they can wholesale back, back to, to their customers in Mexico. So they serve as uh, anywhere from banks to residential customers all over Mexico. Um, and that's, that's what happens. So if we ever have, a, a, I guess, an incident to where they have, uh, let's say, the data center, their data center somewhere in, uh, I don't know, El Paso goes down. What they do is they redirect a lot of that information back this way, so that way the, the, uh, their connectivity is, uh, is not completely severed, and that's what we mean by redundancy, so. And I don't know if there's anything you wanna add to that. I just wanna fix this, but it's still <laughs> So we currently have about uh, a, a little over 10,000 square feet of, uh, of data center space, and currently looking at, uh, at more that we're gonna be opening up here in the valley, so. That's, uh, I don't know if anybody has any specific questions or something maybe you didn't understand. Like I said, a long time ago, years behind, uh, it's been all the fiber that comes in from Mexico and all the fiber that comes in from the north, for some reason landed there at the Chase Tower. So that's where we decided to, to cement, and, and that's why we're there. Were you guys able to help out like wireless broadband companies? Yes, um, again, a data center we, we house, right now we've been concentrating on a lot of uh, the carrier business but we do accept enterprise business, which in this case would be the broadband business. Sometimes you guys need rooftop access or you know stuff of that nature, so we're able to do that. Because I always see their shop at the location at the Wyoming Broadband Company. Mm -hmm. They never have like an antenna outside, and I always wonder if they have a water tower or anything. Yeah, it just depends. I mean, sometimes they, it, on top of the chase tower, there's tons of antennas out there. So, but yes, we have a couple of enterprise businesses that are uh, co-located there. So that uh, maquiladoras from, uh, you know, uh, Reynosa and stuff, they house their equipment here. So their servers. To be more specific. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of weather events worry you the most? I'm sorry? What kind of weather events worry you the most? Um, He's talking about the weather. It's yeah, uh, flooding, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess here... Uh, Hurricane, really, if, if, if we have some type of disaster. Because as far as seismic activity, we have none. Yeah, I try to make it's a seismic zone zero, but we don't have. No earthquakes, no, no, it's not like that. Tomatoes either, so <laughs> it's only hurricanes. Hurricanes, if, if we get anything, it's hurricanes, high winds, but other than that, you know, we really don't get affected by much down here in the valley. Yes. So um, Google Fiber just uh, said, uh, announced rather, that they, uh, they're going to go into Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not trying to say that Google Fiber has to be the one down here, but um, what, would, uh, what would allow you guys to maybe want to compete? Or like, how could we do more fiber down here in the Valley, basically? Would, is the data center the solution, getting more data centers in the Valley? Or? No, um, that'd be the infrastructure. I mean, we could go into, uh, hypothetically speaking, we could go into that business. So then now we'd be competing against, you know, all these carriers. So that would take the, the uh, carrier neutrality out of, out of our business plan. Um, that doesn't benefit us. We've been focused on, on specifically that just to make sure we remain neutral. Uh, those are monsters we would start competing against. As far as there is companies that are looking into that business currently, and there's a, I could probably tell you off the top of my head, there's about three companies that are looking into fiber into the home uh, very soon. 
And the reason I know this is because they'll be housing equipment with us. What are the typical costs, I guess, for co-locating? And is, is, it, is it for everybody, or what, what's the... It, it ranges, really, uh, whether you're an enterprise or a carrier. Um, basically, what goes into that is there's a, there's a power cost, there's a infrastructure cost as far as, you know, if you have fiber coming into your equipment, so forth and so on. So it, it really varies. It can go anywhere from couple hundred dollars to thousands and thousands of dollars so what benefit does a, a local company have going with McCown data center versus some of these other enterprise data centers that are out there? well one of the things is that if um, if you go with another data center that's not local uh, one you would have to either rent the server somewhere else or send your server out there um, if you need access to it you're gonna have to travel for one Two, if you need to change out anything as far as uh, depending on your server or do any kind of updates, you can always have access to your local data center. And there's a security uh, clearance, so you can access your server. You go in, you go straight to your rack or wherever you have your server, and you do the updates. You, you know, virtually, you can always do the updates, but if you need to do any kind of hardware swaps or anything like that, it's there. It, it prevents a cost for traveling, and you know, some people just like to have their data, uh, their their servers there. And I'll give you an example. It's a lot of medical offices here in the valley. They have their servers on the floor in a closet somewhere. Uh, we just bumped into a, a physician that you know, uh, he had a leak in in that room where he had his servers. He fried all his information. So now he's he's looking at contracting us because you know, uh, <laughs> it's too late now, but. <laughs> Now for later. So, uh, but that's one of the benefits that, that you have it local and you know, it'll prevent a, a travel cost or remote hands cost because we do that too. Like if there's a carrier that needs to re hit a reset button on their server, they would have to send somebody from Mexico or India or China or whatever. They just call us, we have small charge for it. We'll reset their server. Sometimes we don't charge for minuscule things like that, but other other things we do like uh, they need to do a migration of fiber from one server you know they need to do a maintenance a maintenance window that's what that's called so uh, they'll call us and test the fibers out make sure that they're they're functioning correctly that information is passing through there correctly so we do these services in-house for a fee which prevents them sending their engineers you know from out of town into into McAllen so any other questions Sure. Anybody? Sure. Have you guys had any major outages that it took a while to recover from? Or? No, uh, there's been incidents in the past. Um, but no, as far as our recovery time, it is, it's very short. Um, with the new infrastructure that we've put in, in here in the past year or so, we haven't had any incidents. So, I mean, there's not even a glitch. Uh, what happens is our, our generators, for example, the a glitch would be kind of like the power outage. So it goes out, the generators kick in within like 15 seconds. And we have five hours of battery. So battery backup. It's so between that, that covers the 15 seconds, and then we're back up and running. Customers, you don't even feel a thing. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much, guys.